This Gibson.com exclusive is pretty cool. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Alright, check this one out, guys. I'm a big fan of it. It's the three pickup Black Beauty Modern Supreme. A few days ago, we talked about the recreated Les Paul Supreme, and I had hinted that we'd be looking at one of these in the future, but look at this. I just... You know, you might lose the flame top, but there's something so classy about having a three pickup Les Paul, and usually you cannot get this outside of the custom shop. Gibson Nashville producing a guitar like this is actually fairly rare. You could go back to the 2007 Guitar of the Week series, they did make one there, but the last time that we saw it was actually a model called the Nashville Black Beauty back in 2017. The price between the two models are exactly the same, they're $3,999. I mean, you tell me, is it worth ditching the flame top, getting a solid finish to get the added middle pickup? Something that might also aid in your decision is the fact that these have less fancy electronics. Since we've got three pickups, they've actually wired this to have three volumes, which usually Gibson doesn't do that stock. You have to do the aftermarket. And you've still got the coil split options, but you do not have the direct to bridge or out of phase options on this. So if you really need those tones, maybe go for the two pickup version. I think on paper, this is the worst deal, but at the same time, I don't know. It's very classy. It's much more tied into tradition and being a Gibson Gibson.com exclusive not being available in all stores kind of makes it cool because you never know how long that they will keep it in production. But it's got all the other stuff that the Les Paul Modern Supreme is known for, so you can check out this episode if you want to learn more about the new Supremes that aren't anything like the original runs. For the price, you get a nice Gibson hard shell case, a Gibson strap, case keys, a Les Paul custom style pickguard if you want to install it. Ouch, that's really, really tempting. I wish they just would have installed it from the factory <laughs> because that looks really good. But yet at the same time, it being naked makes it look more modernized. This one also has a blank truss rod cover as well as a polishing cloth, our Gibson multi-tool and owner's manual and our pre-packed checklist. And just like I told you in the last episode, guys, this one does not have the baby photo. It has officially stopped, at least by the serial number within the queue. Also notice this one did not come with a spare poker chip, so maybe that's kind of luck of the draw. This one got missed. Who knows? I suppose to be fair, my last one came with two, so I might as well include it with this one. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs before we get to that tone sample. Inside the Three Pup Supreme. Let's go ahead and check these pickups out. So our neck pickup, like our last one, labeled Rhythm Pro, and the bridge is the Lead Pro Plus. But we've got our middle pickup with a matching name, the Mid Pro. But strangely, our readings within the circuit are 411 in the bridge, 39 in the neck, and middle position 266. Perhaps why we're getting this, maybe it's a combination of our pickups. So let's try turning these down. There we go. Bridge is 8.28k ohms. Neck is 7.48. And then these two together with the middle off takes it to there. That's about what I would expect. In the middle position, all the pickups are on, and then you can play around with this to get whatever tonal capabilities you want. You only want 70% bridge, full on neck. You want to roll your middle down to halfway. You can do that. But then just your bridge appears to take your neck pickup out like you normally get, but it's still these two pickups together. So if you want just your bridge, then you need to roll that off. It looks like the neck will be those two, and then you can blend the way you want. Bridge are these two. You can blend the way you want, and then this is all three of them on. That's actually a lot different. I really wish they would have left that direct bridge pull up here, because I feel like that would have been very helpful. They actually did correctly label all the volumes that way, and then you've got your master tone. Here's something different from the last one too. Completely painted over pickup cavities. And we can see the widened route as I was talking about. Short neck tenon. I don't see any markings. They were probably there before it got shot over in the ebony finish though. But in case you're curious, this still does have a maple top. It's not true black beauty specs. You don't have the mahogany. And this also has the modern weight relief going on. Now if you're curious, is there a flame top hiding underneath this? Remember, Cesar posted a teaser photo of these before they were announced. And you can see that they are plain tops. Now that doesn't mean if you were to strip one of these, you might not find a little bit of figuring. But rest assured, they're not covering over super flamey tops. Our bridge is API gold lightweight aluminum with hex key adjustments. And also lightweight aluminum gold tailpiece. Same company. 
Black finishes are very quick to show fingerprints, dust, and all that. However, I didn't notice anything too crazy QC-wise. But now we can move on to our mahogany neck with our ebony fretboard. This one also has our compound fretboard radius with 24 3 quarter inch scale, utilizing the Mother of Pearl Super 400 inlays. Nut with the 1.7 inches, increasing to 2.09 by the 12th. First fret neck depth, 0.92, and 0.95 by the 12th. There's that neck profile at the first fret and the 12th fret. Nice and rounded, but gets a little bit flat towards the top on this one. This one definitely has more tooling marks along it. However, I'm not seeing as much as that whole black binding scraping that we saw on our last example. Pretty par for the course overall, based on the two I've had. It doesn't look like these are getting any necessarily special attention. And our new Supreme headstock with all the multiply binding you could want. And you can see our mahogany neck right there with our truss rod. Here's our Les Paul Supreme truss rod cover. You guys ready for a surprise? The Black Beauty version is hand wired. Now I'm surprised they're not charging a premium. I kind of figured they just would have had a custom PCB made for it, but guess not. So that means you have individual push pull pots. That could be a good or a bad thing. If you don't like the setup, you can wire it traditionally. But if you want to swap out your pickups, it's a little bit more involved than a quick connect system. We've got our orange drop capacitor right there. Got a gold output jack and our strap buttons in our usual locations. And the back of this one is a little bit more even than the last one, so I think I can confirm my theory that that other one had the ribbon mahogany. It did see a small dip in the finish in this area though. You can see how it distorts the light a bit. And again, black finishes show all the fingerprints and whatnot. This is definitely a dust magnet, still being a newer sprayed finish, but we've got our little comfort cut over here. I did notice a few very shallow scratches right here. Like you don't necessarily even feel them with your nail. They are present just in case you're interested in buying this one for me. Then moving on to the back of the headstock, we've got our locking grover tuners and our serial number. All said and done, this one is eight pounds, 10.6 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how these pickups sound. So that was all the stock positions with the blending of the pickups. Now we'll hear them coil tap. last time in the two pickup supreme if that unique tone came from the pcb or if it was the pickups this doesn't have the pcb but it still has that active like tone to it it must just be the humbuckers in this one but now instead of blending them let's just get our individual tones so this should be just the neck <laughs> Try just our bridge. So 
this will be all three of them on, but with our middle pickup turned off. So this is like your traditional middle. be asking can we single out just the middle pickup i'm not having success with this that doesn't necessarily mean you can't you might need to change your wiring scheme this is the middle volume if you have that on 10 but these off regardless of position it seems like if one of those is off you can't run that so for me this is a little bit too fiddly of a setup for my own personal tastes but again it's a great recording guitar if you want to sit around and dial in your tones <laughs> the argument that it really doesn't sound that much different as you roll your middle pickup down. 10 and 9 have a nice glassiness to it. Get a little bit more punch at 9, but as soon as you go to 8, anywhere down from that, I'm not getting that much of a change. So if you were really excited for one of these and now you're kind of scared by the controls, here's my best advice to you. If you just roll off your middle pickup, have this one to zero, it's a regular Les Paul again. You got just your bridge. You got just your neck. Although I would argue that it sounds way beefier than normal. And then your middle position is just those two. You can set it and forget it and just play it like a normal Les Paul, or you can bring that back in and have a little bit more tonal opportunity. But for the distortion, I'm just gonna leave the middle pickup out of it. in for fun. Now that we know all about this new Gibson.com exclusive, what are my final thoughts? In the room, I honestly wasn't all that impressed with the tones. However, listening back to the recording, I was actually pretty happy with what it was able to offer. I think I was just overwhelmed by the sheer amount of options trying to present it in its entirety to you. So I hope you found that tone sample to be helpful in aiding your decision. Ultimately, the biggest thing to keep in mind is that you can roll that middle pickup volume off and run this just like a regular Les Paul 3 Pop Custom, and you don't have to worry about any of those 
those blending features if those aren't the sounds you're after. The only trade-off being you now have a master volume control instead of one for your neck and bridge. So overall, I'm happy the Supremes are back, even if they are extremely different from the original runs, and only time will tell if we have them for the long term or if this is a one to two year thing. Personally, I'm most excited that the specs of the modern Supreme seems to make it plausible that the custom shop could come out with their own version of a Supreme for the very first time. All right, troglodytes, I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments, and I'll catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.